Welcome, fellow fans of Clash of Clans. Thank you guys so much for stopping by today. Yes, we are covering five things players have done that have broken the spirit of Clash of Clans. And specifically, what I am talking about is ways that players did things that the designers of Clash of Clans did not intend to happen. Maybe they were within the rules, but it wasn't within the spirit of the game. So I'm just going to get into these and you will see what I'm talking about. I've got five pretty clear examples of this. Some of them are in the past and some of them are still happening. Number one is one that's from the past. That is Town Hall Sniping. This was the act, if you're new to the game, players used to take their town hall and place it on the outside of their base so that another attacker could come by, take down the town hall, and they would immediately receive a shield for the next 12 hours. So people were doing this in order to avoid getting hit for large amounts of loot. They were hoping to get hit by trophy pushers that were happy just to take the easy trophy or two and move on. That way they wouldn't get hit by the farmers and take the big loot losses. Now, of course, this here is not a town hall sniping example. I don't actually have one. Uh, I looked back at my old videos and the closest I had was a log when I was pushing trophies way back in the day showing all sorts of town hall snipes on my attack log. And this is what it looked like back when Town Hall 10 was as far as you could go. And trophies, this was considered pretty high. Over 3,200 in Champion League, that was the highest league there was. Players were pushing for 4,000 around this time that this original video came out. But this was just a very common thing you would see all the time. And yes, the designers, the programmers, the devs at Clash of Clans did not intend for this to happen. If you really think about it, it doesn't make sense. If you're protecting your village, would you put the core of your village on the outside and let other players attack it? No, of course not. And although this went on for years and years in Clash of Clans, eventually when Town Hall 11 was introduced, they got rid of Town Hall sniping and it was no longer a quick and easy way to get a free shield. And, you know, it wasn't intended from the beginning. I don't think the devs saw that one coming. Now, here's another one that caught them by surprise, engineering. Yes, this was also something that the devs didn't really foresee because now obviously players were going to rush and players rushed their bases. But once clan wars were introduced after the beginning of the game, then players realized they could alter their war weight by rushing their bases by developing very strong offenses with not a lot of strong defenses and that would give them favorable war matchups where they could probably go on and win. Uh, so yes, this was again not something that the devs had foreseen. They have taken steps to try to remove most of the engineering because now you have to build all of those structures. But again, obviously like we saw in last week's episode, it's not gone from the game. And yes, this right here is number three, the Queen Walk. This is, again, a way that players kind of came up with an ingenious idea of an attack that, admittedly, the Clash of Clans team didn't really anticipate. I can remember talking to them uh, years ago when Queen Walks first started happening. Uh, they were just shocked. They were surprised that players had thought to take multiple healers, place them on just one hero, and let that hero run rampant through the base with some rage spells maybe. And it has, of course, become a huge strategy that has been used throughout Clan Wars for many, many years. And if you'll recall, there have also been multiple nerfs. We have seen a couple of nerfs to healers. We've seen also the specific nerf to using multiple healers. So that came after the fact, after Queen Walks became a thing, because again, the Clash of Clans team didn't anticipate this being a strategy, uh, you know, and it was not something that came up around right away. It was something that ingenious and thoughtful players came up with, and although it doesn't really go with the whole spirit of the game, meaning that when the Clash developers made the healer, 
The idea wasn't, okay, you place a bunch of healers on one unit and it keeps it alive. The idea was more like a heal spell. They thought, oh, people will place healers here and there and everywhere and heal different units up. Not a specific strategy where you would insert a queen like this and then go in with just the healers and have her take out a quarter, a third of the base, take out the major defenses. It has been a very effective strategy and although... And this is the interesting thing. Although the Clash team has taken steps to nerf it, they could have wiped it out, obviously. They could have made it so healers do not stack or something like that. They could have made a very specific nerf that just completely got rid of Queen Walk. But honestly, again, the developers saw that this is an effective strategy. It's not predominant. It's not, you know, the 90% of attacks are Queen Walks. And it's not necessarily that easy to accomplish so they've left it in the game. I think it's a great addition. You know, the Clash team talks about diversity of attacks. They want to see players using all sorts of different attacks. The game becomes problematic when you've got everybody or a large percentage of a specific town hall using the exact same attack strategy. And Queen Walk has actually worked to diversify things. I think it's a great strategy. And again, if you're good at it, man, you can really get a lot of damage done. So, although unintended, it has been something that has stayed in the game and is exciting. Now, here's another one. Blast from the past, we go to Lightning on Storages. To an old video, this was a video that I made that introduced the Earthquake spell for the very first time. And right at the same time that the brand new Earthquake spell came into Clash of Clans, they got rid of the ability to directly damage storages. Through lightning and of course through the earthquake spell you saw now this shield that would pop up like that and that would prevent players from, well, let's just say that with golden elixir you didn't see it that much, but with dark elixir, because dark elixir was so extremely valuable, you would see players who would just bring a, a, a whole bunch of lightning spells, and that's all they would care about. They would run in, drop all their lightning spells on the Dark Elixir, and run away. Players hated it, the Clash team didn't realize it was going to happen, and they took steps to take it out of the game. Now here comes number five, and this is a controversial one, FWA Clans. Now there is a huge alliance, the Farm War Alliance, these clans that have gone around the idea of regular clan war and they are only in it for the loot. There's no competition, they just want to get loot and as you can see they've got multiple web pages set up with really, really elaborate rules that go all the way down to specifically when they spin for war so that they try to match other clans. They've got penalties for not doing it correctly uh, and you know this is just one example of a farm clan, an FWA clan, but interestingly enough Look at the war opponents. If you look at their war log, they have a great deal of opponents that have farm in their name. So yes, this has been an effective way to subvert the Clash war system. These guys don't care about war wins, they don't care about war stars, they just care about farming for loot by using clan war. It is another thing that is definitely against the spirit of the game but not in direct violation of any rules, terms of service. It's not an exploit, just something that players do. But let me know what you guys think. Are these correct? Should this not happen? Are there others that I didn't think of? Thank you guys so much, as always, for watching. I tried to give you an interesting and unusual look at Clash of Clans. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know again down in the comments. Stay tuned at the end of this video for a little surprise. Have a great day, be kind to other people, and I'll see you back here again tomorrow for more full attacks. Peter, I'm sorry, that's actually Gallagher. something else. It's it's that's not right. I know, but okay, hold on. You guys, hey, thank you for staying at the end of the video. Okay, so what I'm showing you guys is some quick footage of a new game coming from EA. It's not out yet. It is Command and Conquer Rivals. 
Now, if you've played Command & Conquer in the past, you might know about this game. First of all, this is not a sponsored thing. Nobody's paying me to talk about this game. I just used to be a huge freaking fan of Command & Conquer, and here comes Command & Conquer Rivals for mobile. And I'm just curious to feel out from you guys what you think if this is something you would be interested in. The sounds are very similar to the original game, the voices and uh, the troop names, the troop, the troop sounds like that. Uh, it's just, it's really different. It's almost like a blend of, I don't know how to say, a Clash Royale and something else. It's you versus another player. It's real time PVP. You have to try to control those three platforms. You see, there's three platforms in the middle, and if you control two of them for a certain amount of time, it's like 20 seconds or 30 seconds, then you launch a nuclear missile from the center at your opponent. And it takes two nuclear missiles to destroy your opponent's base. So there's, it's resource management, it's troop management. You can go directly, you can see, you can place defenses out there like that. You can go after resources. That's not in this, because this was a tutorial match. Uh, but you can go after resources, Tiberium, to in, in order to build troops more quickly. You can build different types of troops. You can upgrade. You've got troops that are strong against others. I, I haven't even unlocked aircraft yet, but there's ground troops, vehicle troops, and aircraft troops. And then you've got these special abilities, like the minigun turret. So I don't know. I, what, I just wanted to show you guys this for a second and see what you think. Because for me, I'm super excited about this, but I don't know if a lot of people would want to play it. It does have kind of a cool feel in that it's real time. And uh, I don't know, but it, 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 right now it feels a little bit simple, but I guess of course I'm playing the tutorial, so things are going to get harder. There's a ton more units apparently that you can unlock, and then once you start getting into resource management, you can decide whether you attack your opponent's resource collector, your opponent's base, or the uh, three pads in the center for control over the nuclear weapon. So if you stayed to the end of the video, first of all, thank you. But second of all, go down to the comments and let me know what you guys think about this idea. Command and Conquer Rivals. You can also look it up online. And I will let you guys know when it gets released into beta. I will be live streaming this some because it's just a game that I enjoy. Uh, again, it's not sponsored. I just wanted to hear your honest opinion about would you play a game like this? Would it be interesting to watch? That's going to do it. I'm going to destroy my opponent's base and win, and I'll see you again tomorrow for more full attacks.